So I took a time lapse when I was putting everything back together. Thought I'd do a little voiceover on top of it and explain what's going on. Um, here I'm just tinning all the the wires that I hadn't tinned before. Just that means just adding solder to them so that it's much easier to um, solder two different wires together. So I'm just going through a whole bunch of these uh, bare wires and adding solder to them. Then I try and kind of figure out how I'm going to screw some of this together so that I'm still going to have easy access to get my hands inside. Um, I thought maybe at first I'd just do the sides and all the front pieces. I kind of need the front pieces connected because that's where the components screw in. And I didn't want to screw a whole bunch together because I wasn't sure how it was going to fit back together after having been um, stained the last round. And then I realized I never uh, tinned all the wires on these buttons, five buttons, four wires per button, so I decided to do them as I was going to install them. And I installed two buttons at a time, going from the bottom up wasn't the easiest getting the nut on the back of each um, button so I'm kind of using a screwdriver just to spin it around it doesn't have to be super tight just because you're always going to be pushing in on the button and the face of the the speaker doesn't let you push it past the face just it's tightened on there just enough so that uh, it doesn't fall out and then here I cut a bunch of shrink wrap tubing and I put that on the wires so that once I connected the button to the board and tested it out then I could move the shrink wrap tubing over the connection so those uh, mm -hmm. bare wires wouldn't be showing anywhere or couldn't accidentally come in contact with another wire somewhere and short something out inside the box once it's all closed up. After I put in two buttons, I plugged in the power, plugged in a speaker, tested out to make sure they worked. Those two bottom buttons are volume uh, up and down, so they worked, and I'm just moving all the heat shrink tubing over the top, and I used my soldering iron to shrink them over the wires. And now I'm installing the uh, power connection on the side. This is where the big power bit brick um, is going to plug in. I didn't test that, um, but uh, I'll get to test that here soon enough. And I'm installing two more buttons. These are the previous, or back, I guess it said on the board, and next which allows you to skip forward and back from song to song if you want to. All these connections, I probably won't use the buttons very often um, because you can control it all when you're connected to Bluetooth from your phone, like with my iPhone. But it's kind of handy to have the buttons there in case you ever need them or if the phone's on the other side of the room and you quickly want to change something. So same thing here, I soldered wires together, um, brought in the helping hands a little bit to hold wires just to make it easier to connect them. And each button has four wires. Uh, two wires are for controlling the signal of the button. Once you press it, it connects and sends the signal through and the other two wires are for a LED ring that's around each button which um, turns on when the power is on and again I tested all those buttons and made sure to test the previous buttons so that I could see if anything had accidentally come loose during the process and then I'm doing all the heat shrink again it's starting to get kinda jammed in here with so many wires now and here's the fifth and final button I put in. That's the play and pause button. 
and then I am installing the switch right now which overrides the switch on the board. This turns the power on and off. The nut for that is on the outside. And the switch only has two wires. There's no LED for that. But when that switch is flipped on, it provides power to the LEDs on the five buttons. Test everything again. Go through, do the heat treat, heat uh, shrink tubing. I think at this point I forgot. Yeah, here I had a one fell off, or I forgot to put it on, so I had to disconnect a red wire, put a heat shrink on. Now I'm getting ready to do the two LEDs. These are kind of status LEDs to for the Bluetooth. Um, when one when you're connected the green one will blink and when there is no connection or it's waiting for pairing the green and the red buttons will alternate blinking back and forth and at this point I connected both speakers up as you can see right there they're kind of blinking back and forth and now the one is blinking now I did a thorough testing of everything here once everything was connected did the heat shrink tubing on those LEDs and these just kind of fit in holes so I had to get out the hot glue gun and started thinking about how I was going to attach the board I just surrounded those LEDs with a bunch of hot glue to hold them in place started screwing in the uh, speakers I kind of wish I had maybe painted the front metal parts silver of these speakers to match everything else. It's kind of like a gold or bronzish color, but oh well. And then I hot glued that little extra green board which had all my uh, power connections for all the LEDs and things on it. And I hot glued the board in two spots down to the wood base of the speaker. Uh, I think I did a final test there once everything was in and glued down and now I'm starting to final assembly of all the rest of the sides. I pre-screwed everything in a little bit uh, so that I wouldn't have to do it all as it's all connected. And then I started screwing in about halfway just to make sure everything was going to fit properly and hit the holes. And then I started going through and tightening, tightening everything all the way that hadn't been tightened yet. And everything fit pretty well. There's just a slight gap on the top front part, um, which is not a big deal. And here we go, everything connected so you can see it from face on view.